How to use Cineponic Volume 1 with LumaFusion All the sound effects in this tutorial are from my brand new audio collection Cineponic Volume 1 So let's get started Okay, when it comes to sound design on a particular clip Take notes I like to watch the clip completely through As to what I'm going to need And sometimes roughly where it's going to be applied within the actual video clip so we've got a giant Lego man and I've identified the fact that he makes two footsteps so we're going to need two footsteps sound effects we have two simultaneous explosions going on behind him the crowd is actually running towards him which is a bit counterintuitive but we'll show you why that is just in a little while my thoughts are the crowd's going to be screaming that you're going to hear loads of footsteps and there's going to be a lot of reverb off the buildings around in this instance, I've got the sound effects on my desktop. Obviously, if you're using an iPhone or an iPad, they're going to download to the Downloads folder and your iCloud app. When it actually comes to linking to a folder, you click on Add Link to Folder and then choose the appropriate folder. In this case, I'm going to go into my iCloud Drive 2025 and within here, we've got Symphonic Volume 1 and then I've got Symphonic Volume 1 again, but these are the actual sound files tap open I'll generate a link for you then when you tap on it you've then got all the sound effects ready and at your disposal Cinephonic Volume 1 is inspired by the books and the movies of Dune but don't let that confuse you as to what you can and can't do with these sound effects they're not all specific to a science fiction genre there are 600 plus WAV files in the collection and it's taken me about three years to actually create and fine tune all of the different sounds. So for example, we need two footsteps of for our giant Lego man. There's a couple of ways we could play this. First of all, we tap on the search. As there are so many different sounds, it's best to use the search facility within LumaFusion. And from there, for example, we need a footstep sound. So tape in footsteps and you'll see what pops up now you will see doubles going on here that's purely down to the fact that i've also got an alias link folder on my desktop which links through to the icloud version but this is actually the desktop version i'm running so if i tap on the first one see how it sounds it's got potential second one third one fourth one And fifth one. I think we might go for the first one. So all I'm going to do just now is just drag that down onto the timeline. I'll worry about placing it later on. The other way to obviously find sounds is just to manually search the folders. We've got a couple of explosions going on here. And there is actually different explosion sound effects throughout the collection. I think the one that's most appropriate for this is inspired by atomic explosions or nuclear explosions that you see in the movies. So I've got a few of these going on. I think possibly we want to use one of the long ones. That sounds pretty good. So I'll drag and drop that down. And then because there's two explosions, so if we get the beginning of the flash, move that along, you can see where it... Now this is a stylized explosion because obviously it's in slow motion and if it was actually the sound recorded, if this had been a real piece of footage rather than AI generated, then obviously there would be a pitch shift by adjusting the speed. So we don't have to worry about that and it's stick. But what I want to do is also add a short explosion and layer it up so i'm going to come in i'm going to do the short one and then the longer one we'll see how they both play out that seems to be working so that's our explosions taken care of and i should say this whole collection of sounds works best when you actually layer up different sounds so going back out you've got things like hand claps, finger clicks, slow hand claps. You've got different Bram sounds. For example, we're going here. 
as you can see there's many options for you and you want to layer those sounds up so we'll look at adding different sound effects and just enhance and overall give a much more sort of cinematic and grandeur to the actual sounds when I get a sound that I like, what I tend to do is tag it. So for example, as you can see here, I've used three crowd scream shouts throughout this particular video clip. Tag the first one with green. How you go about doing that is just select the file and then go down here to our color tags and then I've just chosen green. If I want two, obviously it can be yellow or anything that suits. And this is two handy purposes. And that is one, it makes it easier to find Another thing is, if you want to be, shall we say, a little bit more frugal in your choice of sound effects and not use the same ones over and over again for every single project, then you can obviously tag it with a particular colour and then you know that you want to pick something that's slightly different just so that each video project has a different sound design to it. Again, just going up, tagging green makes it much easier to see and being able to interact with. When I've talked about leering up, what do I actually mean by that? Well, we've got our footstep sound here, the first one, and then the placement of the second one, then our explosion. But that's just the overall beginning of creating the footstep sound. At the moment, it just sounds like a man or a woman walking along a concrete floor. So we need to give it a bit of weight and gravitas because that's a big ass Lego figure there. So if I switch on, the visibility of the second layer. Now I know I say layering up, but we're actually working our way down, but it's just a sort of terminology thing. Then you'll see when I apply the second sound, this is a heavier hit. And that's got much more weight to it. And again, we repeat that on the other side. And you'll also see there's our second atomic explosion sound. And then if we switch on the third layer of audio, this time it's an echo thump. So these were inspired by the thumpers you see in the movies. Now if I pull things back and have a listen. Hell of a lot heavier now. And then the final sound, which I've got split over two different layers. We switch that on. Not only have we got a bass drop here going on, we'll talk about that in a second, but we've got what I call a worm thump. And it's just a sort of deep crashing sound, again inspired by Shahalud or the worms in Arrakis actually breaking through the sand dunes. And I had to obviously place the worm thump down here on the fifth layer because I've got my high bass drop here as well and that's just a bit of a fun sound um, signifying the fact that there's two bombs about to drop so that works out quite well and you can see color coded here I've got my two atomic explosions but more importantly at the back end of the explosions I've got two different wind sounds and again these represent the atomic wind or the pressure wave in the air moving through from the actual blast itself. So if we play them both together. And then on the next layer, we start to interact with our crowd by creating a tension layer. So if we switch that on. And then below that, we've got our first crowd screams. And again, this is taking poetic license with the fact that the crowd is not that big at the moment and it's also running in slow motion. So we've got a few more sort of crowd sounds than we probably actually need. But again, this is not a realistic piece of footage, so I can play about with it. <laughs> Thank you. 
And we switch on the next layer. So when I say layering up physically in LumaFusion, we're layering down, but we're adding layers of sound to create an overall sound design. And that's what Cinephonic Volume 1 is all about. Yes, it's been inspired by the movie Dune, but the sounds in it are very much real world, everyday sounds that you can effectively use on any project. So there's our next set of crowd shouts. And then finally, the last piece of sound design is a warrior cry which is I'm kind of using with the Lego figure and just kind of giving him a, a, the ability to cry out. Maybe it would work better if the mouth was actually animated and it was sort of stretching out and looking as if he's actually roaring, but you get the idea. And that completes the sound design. You can see all the different layers interacting and you'll notice some of the layers have actually increased the gain, others have actually lowered the gain a little bit. And on an individual level, the likes of the original footstep sound, if I go into that a little second, you'll see it's set with a reverb. And I use reverb quite a lot. You'll find the reverb in the second panel in the sort of sound and I tend to use cathedral or large room 2 or large chamber a lot so don't be scared to add a bit of reverb to these sounds as well so the whole purpose of this exercise is to show you that all these sounds that have got all these dune related names pretty much have real world sounds linked to them and you can chop and change them and use them as a sound design overall for your projects. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed how I go about using my new Cinephonic Volume 1 sound collection. 600 plus different high quality wave files. It's literally taken me three years to create and obviously is inspired by the movie Dune, as I've said already. Don't forget to like and share and I will catch you on the next one. See you later.